Myrick, praise God, to our chairman, Deacon, in the house tonight, Deacon Al Dennis, God is so good to the people of God, we'll have to hear something for him before we close out on tonight, if, if, if that works out for us, amen, praise God, amen, but we love the Lord tonight, to the elders that's here, praise God, uh, those of you who may be watching on streaming, thank you, thank you so much. And to all the people of God, to the missionaries, amen, deacons that are in the house, praise God, thank God for being here on a Wednesday night, amen, amen, midweek Bible study, and I praise God for the opportunity to be here on tonight. We thank God for the Church of God in Christ there in their spring call, and uh, we were viewing it virtually uh, of these past few days, and to see the Church of God in Christ is in their form of working, uh, doing things for this church, progressing and all the above, and making appointments and all those things, and this, they're doing the business matters of the church. But we thank God for virtual that we can do that from home. Amen? So I pray that those of us who are connected with ministry, uh, if we don't get the opportunity to go to Memphis, you can uh, view the spring call sessions right on your cell phone, on your laptop, and just be there as if though you're there, right? Amen. I was watching today, and Pastor Scarce uh, came forth. You know, he's representing Ohio Northwest, Bishop Kimbrough, and uh, they were speaking about perhaps purchasing one of the hotels downtown, right? Uh, they're looking at doing that, and they went on the further to say that they had a $100 million contract to help, you know, make things good for that. Pastor Scarce with his boldness. I told him during the workers' meeting, I admire his tenacity. I admire his resilience. He reminded me of myself when I was his age. I'm honest with that when I was his age. I'm not his age anymore. But you see young men who go after a whole lot. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? They don't just settle for just status quo. They go to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. The Bible says, book of Ecclesiastes, 10 chapter, it said, don't put, every, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Basically said, because you never know which one of those uh, things that you invest in will come back with a return, okay? So that's how I see that young man. He, he does this, does that anyway. But anyway, I'm going to get to my point. So when he presented to them a proposal, they accepted it. I mean, the national church accepted it. I'm going to step in for Elder Pastor Scares. I watched it. I'm like, let me see what he's going to do. <laughs> and the chairman said, we're going to put this, da, da, da. So Pastor Scares said, so, so who do I go through? He said, you go through the general, I mean, this session right here. And it was just amazing. But I pray that that young man's heart that he had, and he wasn't selfish about it. He wanted to look out for all entrepreneurs who, who paint and do electric, all that. Come on. If they got a new hotel, they got to be decorated, right? They got to be supplied with people to work in it. So he said, why not invest that $100 million, come on, in what we have part of the church? Come on. Let's, come on, understand that. That was true wisdom from a young man. Young men, we have to understand that our future is, uh, uh, is right there before us. Say it again. Yet the young men see the vision. There you go. The vision. And when there is no vision, what happens? People perish. You know, we said on Sunday, it was a Lord's moment. We can't be comfortable. When you get comfortable, you just say, oh, I'm good. No need for movement. No need for advancement. It works just fine. Mm. But nonetheless, I just thank God for that. I didn't come here to say that, but I did. Bless you, Lord. But nonetheless, God is good. But we applaud the work of God. We appreciate, uh, I thank God, another observation. We're noticing Elder Blanton and uh, Brother Orton, Brother Dennis, and Elder Clack, your men tonight, Brother Troy. We're noticing there are men coming in this ministry. They're visiting us, right? They're, they're being part of the uh, setting. I appreciate Brother Blanton. His nephews were here. With his, first of all, his sister was here. Let's celebrate his sister was here. Come on, come on. Amen. Let's not forget those visitors that was on the back row that came here Easter and they came back, right? 
I hope y'all flooded them. <laughs> I hope y'all flooded them. Because the young lady said, I came and she brought somebody else with her. How are we going to evangelize and disciple those who walk in our doors? We got to be ready to open up to them and go after them. Amen. With all our heart, with all our strength, all our might. Mother Mark, I'm going to finish that document. We need to get done. I'm going to do it this week. Amen. So God is good. There's so much to be done. But I'm excited tonight. You might say, well, Pastor, where are we going tonight? The burden of ministry. Burden is not a dirty word. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and what learn of me and my my yoke is easy and my burdens are light so we're gonna have burdens right amen but it's how we process them and how we engage with them and how we learn how to take it to the lord in prayer before i get into my powerpoint troy i'm gonna just read i'm gonna read this handout we got the book of Nehemiah, you all know that's my favorite chapter. Y'all might say, Pastor Hayes, you talk about Nehemiah all the time. Guess what? It's in my heart. It's a vision in my heart. It's the work of the Lord that I see in Nehemiah. And we've, we've left out a person in, in the story about Nehemiah on the wall. We said Sembala and Tobiah. Who else was on that wall? Uh, who else came against Nehemiah? I saw it today in my study. Starts with a G. Anybody know who it is? Bible scholars? Sanballat and this person came to where Nehemiah was. He sent messengers and told them, you know, they wanted him to come down the wall, to come off from when he's working, so wanted to meet him in the church house, in the, in the temple somewhere, right? That wasn't the truth, was it? The enemy would try to distract you. You know, he really wants to distract all of us. And how does he do that? He does things that preoccupy your mind, and that's all your mind is thinking about. Mm. This is a distraction. And, you know, the late Joyce Rogers said, fatal what? She, said she wrote a book called what? Fatal Distractions. Distractions can be fatal. But that's why we have to know how to do what Nehemiah did when he found himself with a burden. Amen? Does anybody in this room have a burden about anything? Come on. I'm going to say a burden, something that's... Oh, well, let's, let's define it, Troy. The next slide says, a burden is what? Read it together. It's a load, typically a heavy one. So there are those moments, there are those situations, and there are those occasions that we find ourselves with a burden and with a load. You can keep that there for a moment. Uh, nonetheless, but the book of Nehemiah continues the story of the Jewish exiles who returned to their homeland after the Babylonian captivity. As told in the book of Ezra, a group of about 50,000 returned to Judah in the first year of Cyrus, conqueror of Babylon. The template of Jerusalem was rebuilt by this group. Ezra himself led about 1,500 more back some 80 years later. 458 B.C., but Ezra's spiritual leadership led to a vital reform. You know, Ezra had the people all come together where? In the marketplace. And stand in the marketplace and do what? What did they do in the marketplace with Ezra? He had them do what? To read the what? Read the law. Read the word. Amen? Could y'all say amen? <laughs> That's what they did. They, they, he read the word. He wanted them to read the word. And we often hear Dr. Ellis speak about the marketplace. The marketplace is places that we go and, and, and to mingle all across different spaces, different places. Like I told you about my son's experience at Kroger's, at their mind and my business. But someone was asking about music, of ministry. The fact is, we have an opportunity to witness in the marketplace. I appreciate Mother Johnson. She made those cards, right? Make sure we always have a card on you. Because somebody always, I'm always doing this number. Let me open my wallet to find a card. Praise God I had a card. I was able to give this cinnamon. But the fact is, that's a form of ministry. We say, let's get tracks, right? Well, guess what? That's a track. Come on, y'all. It got the church information. It has all the services. Have our church name. Praise God. So anyway, so I appreciate the movement of that work. So Ezra's spiritual leadership led to a vital 
reform those who had married foreign women, divorced them, and recommitted themselves to their covenant relationship with God. You know, they had married these wives that was not part of what they should have done, and that was a, that was a, that was a hard thing, y'all. What you going to do when you got to go back and undo that thing? That was the reform. That, that was real. Nonetheless, the events recorded by Nehemiah took place some 12 years later. Nehemiah came as a governor appointed to lead his people with the express purpose of rebuilding the walls of the holy city. I'm going to drop down to the word walls. Cities in the ancient world were walled, were, I'm sorry, were walled for protection. Take a wall down, what don't, what don't you have? No protection. The walls were also symbols. Everybody say symbols. Unwalled cities merited contempt. Walled cities were seen as significant. Nehemiah could not stand the thought. Go back to his burden. Nehemiah could not stand the thought that the city of God should not have walls and committed himself to rebuild them. So what is it in your life that you've see that you want to be committed to what walls do you see that are down that you want to see rebuilt name me some things i'll get an example relationship anybody else that's that's a that's a wall that needs to be built up what else some things some situations marriages need to be built but mark friendship oh yes that's a good one friendship relationships marriages somebody else that's broken down need to be built Midweek Bible study. Come on, y'all. <laughs> These chairs should be full. Come on. Go. Say it again. Family ship. Thank you, Brother Mark. You said love. We got to love one another. Amen. Prayer. Woo. We're going to get in that, Mother, mother uh, Ben, in this moment. Because, see, that's what I love about Nehemiah. That's why I thought to God, why we come, keep coming back to this man, this model. Nehemiah gave an awesome prayer, Mother Mari. He gave an in-depth, detailed prayer. And I began to think about, first of all, let's talk about that uh, eclipse. Did y'all experience that? It was amazing. And I'm like sitting in the house watching the news, and they said, da -da -da, it's coming to Dayton, Ohio, about da 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 So I'm sitting in my house. I go outside. I, I thank God I have my glasses. Put my glasses on. I'm like, I looked up, and whoa. You saw the like the mouse that said, ate the chip of the moon, right? So I went in and out, came back. More I went back out, come back in, boo. Then all of a sudden, it got dark. And guess what? I'm, I'm telling you how, how spiritual this thing is. Uh, and when I say spiritual, how natural things were. Street lights popped on. <laughs> my, my light on my porch popped on, you know, because it's one of those met by, by darkness. Flower lights in the yards popped on. I mean, the world went dark in the afternoon. Think about that. Imagine God in his infancy. And, you know, I, I spoke about suddenly the sun stood still. And people were saying, well, basically the sun moved. No, the moon moved over the sun, right? But it was amazing. And then it came back. Everybody went back to normal. Roosters was growing. Th that was a reaction. So I'm saying, what is it that's burdening us? That what you want to say, brother? Your your birds is going off. Yes, because the <laughs> they bird mama mother mother said the birds were flying everywhere. The zoo talked about how the animals started running. It messed up their rhythm. Oh, no, they knew what to do in the dark. But saints of God, we ought to be a light in the darkness. People should see us as a light in the darkness to see us the same way in the light and the dark. Y'all, come on, somebody. But it was amazing to see that. And, and let me say this. Uh, my good friend, Dr. Tank, that was here, you know, uh, I saw his post. He said, you know what? He said, Pastor Hayes, he said, our churches should be full on Sunday. You know, with the earthquake in New York, New Jersey, we got this eclipse. The churches should be full, right? So this is what Dr. Tank says. So everybody was talking about all what they saw and the eclipse. And he said, wait a minute. He said, wait a minute. I didn't get to see none of that. He 
said, why did it happen to me? I said, perhaps that's why people left from Virginia to come to Ohio, because we was in a totality, y'all. Come on. Understand that that was the, the mechanism, because everybody, unfortunately, did not get to experience it because of where they may have been located. We thought it was going to have rain in Ohio. It was a lot cloudy, but God let the sun shine. But what I love the also, Elder Blanton, and you teachers who work with kids, to see our children were engaged. They had science lesson. Who's, someone may want to be a scientist after seeing that, right? I mean, we, it's, we got to understand things just don't happen. And they said the next one going to be in, what, 2094? Um, I said, well, I'll be somebody, but I might be still living at 100. Y'all don't, don't put me in the grave yet. Now, Mother Coleman was 105, and she was in this church. So don't y'all think y'all going to leave her when you turn 75 necessarily. Y'all might die tonight, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, right? But get back to my, my lesson. Thank you. We're good. Uh, praise God. So therefore, Nehemiah could not stand the thought that the city of God should not have walls, and he committed himself to rebuild them. Committed himself to rebuild them. We have to commit ourselves to the work of God. It was a jolt for men like Ezra and, and Nehemiah to discover that Israel too needed fresh beginnings. You're going to see where Nehemiah had to find themselves. The next slide, Troy, let it says. These are the words of Nehemiah. I, I put them specifically, identified it just as they were because Nehemiah was burdened. Okay, he had a concern. He heard about what was taking place. He heard about the plight. And uh, it picks up with, with a prayer. If, you, if your Bible should, should say to you, Nehemiah's prayer. Amen. We do the Lord's prayer. We do uh, David's prayer. There's a lot of prayers we do, right? But Nehemiah has a prayer that really, that there's some words that we want to focus on tonight. It says, they said to me, Getting, getting, getting to his prayer. Let me get there. This is what the words he said before he got to his prayer. He said, those who survived the exile are back in the province and are in great trouble. Think about that, the word trouble. Great trouble and disgrace. There are some things that are troubling. There are some things that are disgraceful. The wall of Jerusalem is what? is broken down the wall of jerusalem is broken down is that not concerning he could have cared less about the broken wall right but it did what it concerned him it became a burden and the gates have been burned with what fire next verse now here's the, pr the prayer Next slide. The response. When I heard these things, get into the prayer, I'm sorry. When I heard these things, he said, I sat down. I don't have to sit down. I know my word acted out, but I'm not. <laughs> I sat down and I wept. Men don't cry. Men don't cry. Men don't have emotions. Men don't have feelings. Uh, the workers meeting was here, and Mother Bradford, I was just here, Mother Mark. I had the opportunity, Mother Mark and the different ones opened up the church for years with the Atkins. And brother, then I had, the, I had the first opportunity to be available to open up the church. That, that felt good to me, right? At a workers' meeting. Mother, Mother uh, uh, Bradford walks in. She, I, I was first. She got here. She said, Pastor Hayes, I want you to check your calendar and I want you to be one of our guest uh, presenters. On June 8th, I said, by all means, mother, I'll check my, I'll check my, my, my calendar, I'll check my schedule. Uh, she said, because I want you to address the men. Come on, y'all. Right? I want you to address the men about mental health. Right? Right? So the fact is, so we can talk about men, men do weep, men do cry, right? Men do, men do have emotions, men do feel. For some days, I mourn and I fasted. So this is what you got to do when you start weeping and start, you know, getting, getting, getting concerned and, 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 and the problem can, can, can weigh on you. You got to do something about that, right? 
So what did he do? He fasted. What else? And he, began, and he prayed before who? God. Saints of God, we have total access to God. He is waiting for us to talk to him. So just let it out. Amen? So then he said, then I said, now I think this is the prayer starting. No, here we go. This is what was spoken to God. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant. Are you a servant today? When you go to God, talk to him like you belong to him. Amen. Let your ear be attentive to your and your eyes open to hear the prayer and your servant is praying before you day and night. Sometimes say, we got to pray day and night. Oh, I appreciate every prayer y'all putting up for me because God is working some things out. Trust me. Trust me, he's working some things out. And I, and, and I have to step back and say, God, i got to let you have this, let you do this, hear your servant's prayer before day and night for your servants, not just for the servant himself, but Nehemiah had people that was concerned as well with him. Amen. I a church got to have people that are concerned. Amen. Don't lead them all with the pastor. It says the people of Israel. I confess, first of all, I love this, he was transparent. People will not trust you. I'm sorry. People will not be transparent with you if they, not tr they don't trust you. Let's just keep that clear. Because they feel like you would judge them or you already made an assumption what they uh, should do, how to do, etc. But he said, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself, point a finger at somebody, what's coming back at you? Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my wrong. See, what I like about Nehemiah as a leader, he took response. They, they call sometimes the leaders, Air Force taught you, taught the buck stops here, right? But leadership, a real leader, he, 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 he takes accountability. Things that go wrong, he may not have done anything, but because he's a good leader, right? But they say about a sailor, the, the captain is going down with what? With the ship. That's the Navy in the house, y'all. Come on. <laughs> uh, I confess the sins we, we, we Israelites to myself and my father's family have committed against you. We, uh, we sin against God when we fail to obey his word. Amen. My son, my daughter, your, your, my wife, myself, my grandkids, if we fail to obey the word of God, we sin. Amen. Family, we acted, it said we have acted very wickedly towards who? To God. We have not obeyed the commands decrees and laws that you gave your servant Moses. Moses is Elder Blanton's friend. He loves to talk about Moses on the back side of the mountain. I was reading about Moses today. Moses went up not only to the back side of the mountain, but he went up to the mountain. Maybe not, maybe. Anyway, they went up in the Exodus 33rd chapter, and he brought Aaron with him, and there they were. Moses went up to talk to God, Sister Orton. And when soon, just as soon as Moses left their presence, what did they do? Well, how did they go about it? They did, but how did they do it? When he went up, they came to him with this. They saw what? Wait a minute. We don't know where he, where he at. He brought us out here in this Egypt. What, so what, what you going to do? He said, give me your earrings from your, your daughters and your sons. The sons wore earrings back in there, y'all. Is it the Bible? He took it, and he did what? Build a golden calf. And the Bible says they was down there partying and doing all that. They said they rose and played, y'all, sat down and drank. But then God, everybody say, God, God heard something. What he heard, they wasn't praying. Make sure when the noise you're making is the noise unto the Lord. Amen. Make sure your prayer, Elder Clack said about love, make sure your love not, is not like a clinking symbol and nobody feels it. Nobody sees it. Nobody knows it because it's not for real. So he said, so God said, get back down there and 
find out what these people are doing because he said, I'm about to consume them. He said, I'm about to consume them because of them not failing to do what? My commandments. But, but this is what helped me, Elder Blanton, and all of us. I, I made a post, and I correct myself. Y'all may not saw it, but not that you see my social media. I said, God does not need man to help him with his assignment for his kingdom. That's what I, that's what I said. That's what I said, Mother. Mother, I said it just as bold as I could be. And don't you know, I, 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 someone, I'm like just saying, it, it, I, I read it, but then I'm talking about this story about Moses and uh, Aaron, Aaron and, Aaron, Aaron and Moses and God. God said he was going to go down and destroy those people, right? But Moses said, oh, God, but, 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 but God, if, if, if you go down and do that, the people are going to see that you, you, we, we brought us out here and, and then you destroyed us and, and they're going to they look at us and like we've been defeated and all above. You know what God said? And, and, and because of Moses' connection and conversation with God, the Bible says God relented. Woo! What did you think that meant? He changed his mind because because Moses. Imagine Lot. Let's go to the side of Gomorrah. God said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, right? If I find 50, I want to destroy them. Da-da-da. He went on down to five, right? Later on, gets down to where God did destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But guess who, but guess who he remembered? Who said it? Lot. <laughs> he remembered. Wow. God, so, so what does it say to me? We got to have a relationship, Mother, Mother, Mother Benny, with God that we can talk to him. And like the word of God says, come, let us reason together. <laughs> Said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, but, but, but God, we need God. And God is going to do what he's going to do. But does not take away the fact that that's what he was going to purpose to do. God can change his mind. God can change his mind. So you could probably find some other stories, but those were just a couple. But let's go to the next verse. It's getting good because I'm sweating. I need to stop moving. Uh, but he says, he says, remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying if you are unfaithful, mm, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, Somebody need to return to God. Somebody in this broken world with these broken walls, you want to give up. You want to you almost end your life for broken walls. I, I want to commend the work of the wellness ministry. And I think people like to, and I thank God when people work in a different specific field, you, you're, you're very familiar with the language. The help keeps us relevant, right? Correct? I used to say that my mom committed suicide. I said, I used to say that. But thank God to the great instruction and the help that's in the church with the wellness ministry, she died by suicide. Difference, how that sounds, right? So things of that nature, that that's why I thank God with Moses, not Moses, but Nehemiah. Uh, I shared a post, I shared an email the other day. Uh, I, need, I don't have it right quick on, for me. But when you have people working, let me get to it while I'm, reading, while I'm talking about it. I'll find it right quick. Work with you, just know your work is valued. Amen? You are valued. Your input, your uh, whether we're all to see something and get, it, get the job done and not be slothful about it. Maybe go to another way I can find it. Not be slothful about our work. We, shake, we can't be slothful, people of God, right? Right? We, we got to be on this is God's work. We got to be diligent, vigilant, vigilant, not vigilant. I'm seeing it. Diligent. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, I got to find that email. I'll come to it later. I can't find it right now. Uh, so let's get back to this. He said, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey your commandments,
gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Uh, I, you know, I, I wrote that in a statement with, new, with not New Heart, but with our church. God gave me that word when I saw that the place with a name that I have chosen. There's a place God has for us. And there's a place God has for you, amen? And you want to be in that place. Where that place may be, God, because your name is there. Hallelujah. I want to be in a church where God's presence is there, right? Uh, Missionary Orton, she talked about that thing. The old church, I really had a flashback. We had a almost a flashback old time Terrence service on Sunday morning. I don't know if there was young men on this altar. We had to be, we, we got to be ready to go after the soul. That young man that's been coming to the church, he's so respectful to me. He said, how you doing, pastor? He, he like, you get a joy saying that. Like, really? To myself, that's so nice. You know? And, you know, he's with my grandson. He'll come to, my grandson, he'll come to my house. He said, thank you for letting me come to your house, pastor. I'm like, okay, you know. But, 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 he, but he, it's so, I don't know how they see that. You know how they see that? Respectful. Respectful. I like that. But he's excited about the Lord. He's excited about the Lord. We, we got to reach him. We got to let him know that he's in a good place. Oh, if men would praise him. He's only 17, but he's excited about the Lord. Yes, that just excites me. Next verse, next slide says, and I, this is my quote, leaders have burdens of the heart they have, that they have, so they must find a way to carry out what, is, what it is God lays in their spirit. Say that one more time. Leaders have burdens of the heart that they have, so they must find a way to carry out what it is God lays in their spirit. Amen. That's what Nehemiah found himself doing. He had to find a way to get to what he needed to get to with that burden he had. Amen. Next slide. The support of the workers in ministry. It says from the, it says, here we go back to that, that story I talked about. From that day on, half of my servants, they worked on construction and half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and the coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah who were building on the wall. Those who did what? Carry burdens. I told you all, burden is not a dirty word. Burdens is something that we can find in the word of God, but we find know how to work through them. It says those who carry burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held his weapon with the other. I taught that at the leadership conference. I had to do a, a, a session, and I talked about this uh, at the conference. No, it wasn't. At, it was at AIM. About, uh, it was a case study how, you know, they had the hand on the wall, and they had a hand with a weapon, right? And that's how we got to be saying, we, we, we cannot come down from this wall, amen? And this is a spiritual war we in here. Spirit, this is a spiritual warfare we're in, people of God. Not, not a natural, but this is a spiritual thing. The people, the church, as a, we got to understand, we got to fight this fight of faith, the good fight of faith, and be persevering and, and moving forward and making things happen. The next slide says, I'm almost getting done. The closing words to a powerful prayer, that your servants, I love how he concluded this, that your servants and your people, I'm sorry, not that, that, they are your servants and your people, amen, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Thank God for the hand of God, amen. He has a mighty hand, saints of God. The God we serve has a mighty hand. He said, Lord, let your ear be attentive. He said that again. He said it at the top of the prayer, right? 
He's saying it again in the closing of the prayer. He said, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this. Everybody say this. You, gotta, you, this, you have that opportunity to tell God just what you want him to do. You want your ear to be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight and and who delight in revering your name. There's nobody like, there's no name like Jesus, amen. There's no name other than that men may be saved, but through the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. The name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are afflicted in the name of Jesus. Brother Allstork reached out to me. He said, I was coming to church, Pastor. He said, but I got a situation going on, my loved one, uh, in, in, in dire situation, and I had to be there. It's, it's distressing. It's a very painful moment. So I said, but we can pray, right? Come on. We're going to put your love on our prayer list. Come, remember the All-Star family tonight. Amen. That God reached them. That God intervened. The Dixie's family. Other people that got situations. We can call their names out to God in what? In prayer. In the name of Jesus. But here's the end. I'm closing out. And in academia, we use the word, we use the word, your learning outcomes or your learning objectives. So the, the, the whole content for me with this particular prayer and this particular burden that Nehemiah had, he had an expected outcome. Amen? Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, expect your great. Say it one more time. Whatever you're going through, whatever you are facing, you got to expect your great. You got to expect the outcome to be just what the word. I didn't write this. This is from the word of the Lord. Nehemiah said, give your servant what? Say it, y'all. Give your servant success when? Today. Everybody say Today. Give your servant success today. He said, give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Woo! Hallelujah. Give your servant success today by granting him favor. Now, who does that sound like on Sunday? Who does that sound like on Sunday? Go to, where was that Sunday? Joshua, yeah, 10, go to Joshua 10. Joshua 10, I think it's the 23rd verse, Troy. I'm guessing Joshua 10, I hope that's the right verse. I'll find it in a minute. I, I, gotta, I gotta get that out. He wanted God, no, that's not it. Oh, oh so I, I gotta find it, y'all. Let me help me, help me, Lord. Help me find my scripture. Oh, I'm going to find it. I got it right here. Now, do I, I've, I've shared this with those who have reached out to me for prayer. I've sent it out at least three times already. I'm serious. I'm, I'm really real. It is Joshua 10 and 14. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I know it was the 10th, but it was the wrong verse. And there has been no day like that before it or after it. Now, that's amazing. When the Bible can say something didn't happen like that before, it means that. It says, and there has been no day like that before it or after it that the Lord heeded. Get this part of this, this lesson, the lesson outcome. Nehemiah prayer was for the Lord to let him have what? Success when? Today. And he said it that he said from his servants. Come on, y'all, get the part about it was his prayers, his words to God that he wanted him to hear him, to know God, I believe for this. And look what Joshua said. He said, for the Lord, it says, it says that the Lord heeded the voice of who? Of a man. He hears your prayer. Women of God, he hears your prayer. Mothers, he hears your prayer. Fathers, 
He hears your prayer. You got to believe without a shadow of a doubt. Go back to that learning outcome, Troy. That's the outcome tonight. Expect your great. The learning outcome, you lean there as you read the word of God, look at it, I always say, see yourself in the word. Find your situation in the word. Now, God, now here am I. Now I need something out of this. Woo. I need God to make this ministry successful. Come on. We want to have a successful ministry. God, we want to have successful uh, 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 departments. Come on, right? Let me tell you, Sister Thompson, you ought to be dancing. Uh, you dance anyway. Last Sunday, Sunday school, was that last Sunday? It was, it was filled. Did y'all see it? Did y'all see it? What did you say? You said in the back, it was full. We ought to be leaping. This, this, he said we had a lot. Oh, you need a big, listen, listen, y'all, come on. God is up to something. And we got to thank him for what he's doing right now. Because, you know, my back was, be, this, it's behind, and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not looking at the back, you know. I got this up. It was amazing. That was amazing. Hallelujah. That encouraged me more than y'all know. Man, that's why I preached so high. I was so happy. So I was like, whoa, God. I, was, I felt so good. I began to think about God's. I, I, that was in the back of my mind. You know, I, I got to say this. We got to, I, I need me a photographer who can capture those moments. I talked about that on Vernon. We talked about everybody had a camera. Then guess what? If you take a picture on this ground, it belongs to us. <laughs> All right, come on. It's up to probably, I mean, anyway. But I said it to say this. And, 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 they're, and they're talking about this at the, uh, you no, know, I'm going to share a survey with you guys that we got today from the spring call. Uh, I've maybe sent it through the email. But the Barna group, everybody say Barna group. Elder Blanton, you and me need to sit down together and go over this Barna group. Matter of fact, we need to have a focus group with leaders. So the clock, I understand we've got to get an appointment with you as well. Uh, I had a focus group with the church a few months ago. But on last night, uh, I was called to be part of a focus group with the church. Uh, some leaders, we took a social justice course with the church. And, uh, and I said, uh, and I said, I said, you know, I, I, I was uh, occupied. I was doing this, doing that. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something with one of my grandsons. You know, I'm, I'm working with this and that. I said, I don't know if I can really, you know, join that. I, so I said, well, you, you can just check out. You don't have to stay the whole time. I'm like, okay, okay. Get on there. And the focus group, it was a couple of doctors. And one of them was in Mississippi, Dr. Jameson. She really blessed me, Bella Blanton. She retired from education. She uh, was the principal all above, but then she, she started a school in 2015, K through 12. And she said most of the students are males. Caught my ear, right? There was another one who got a PhD, he was talking, and you know, was talking about she was a facilitator. A, 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 a facilitator of a focus group just asked the questions. That's all they do. They got the questions, and you respond, and you talk. They record it, but we were all engaged and, and, and embracing the conversation. But what blessed me was the fact, when, when I see what God is doing for faith deliverance, he's about to take us where we want to go. Amen? Yeah. Mother Willie said we're going to blow up. She said it. <laughs> God, God can blow us up, not for our glory, but for his glory. Because this is our church. You got to love your church. Come on, do you love your church? But we got to sit down and, and, and talk about it. But going back to the Barner group, thanks, Elder Blanton. Uh, Brother Dennis, uh, you need to know this for me. Barner group is something I like. Let's get the offering tray. Barner group has a lot of research. 
and this is what blew my mind. Uh, when they talked about the Barner group today, they got a little nervous. But guess what? It's, 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 from you, it's, it's from the people. How can I become a better pastor if I don't know what I'm not doing right? You got to tell me, because you're not going to always do that. You're like, oh, I can't say that. Yeah, you can. Help me. What, help me know my weakness, my fault. They, they, they really call it a SWOT analysis. So when they, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity for your giving, blessing my people that have to get it, not to praise your name. Thank God. Amen. They were talking about uh, the different questions, and, and I did the survey. It was very great, very nice. But it made me go to, ref, to the point, seeing what God is doing, we got to capture it and not let it die. We got to have a plan of attack. Uh, we got to make sure that everything that we're doing, we capitalize on it. We are working on it. We got to have a plan for these youth in the summer. Amen. We, we, we got to have a plan for the youth in the summer. Uh, and I thank God for that. I see you got these announcements going on, so I'm going to let somebody kind of address them if you need to or not. But you can let them roll. And as we're seeing, some of these things are coming up. Uh, the announcement, sewing circle, artistic fingers, okay, computer trainings to Cheryl Carter. They, again, so I, we, we need to applaud our work that we're doing. Make noise about our work, people of God. Amen. Uh, but we've got to have a plan, have a game plan. Uh, praise God. With all these things, so Mother Mark, Deacon Dennis, I need to uh, get a group meeting with the leaders. I need to schedule a meeting with the leaders just to real soon. Okay, so we can sit down and uh, have a little focus group, talk about some things uh, that God is doing. Like I said, set, set the times, and again, the, the Lord is, is moving in the Sunday school. Amen. I share with Elder Blanton, I know summer's coming. Uh, we do uh, YP online. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll discuss how we want to do YP in the summer, perhaps. We want to come in and do YP. Or you still like to do YP on Zoom. You know what I'm saying? I, I just like to give us an opportunity to gather as much as we possibly can when we can, right? Uh, thank God we had a great, we had a really a mild winter in Ohio. What would y'all say? We had a very mild winter in Ohio. Uh, I prayed for God not to let it snow because I didn't want them messing up that, that driveway out there with that scraper. I said, oh, God, don't let it snow a lot. God heard me. <laughs> Will he use that maybe twice? It wasn't a whole lot of snow, but, but we want to just sit down as a family of God for God to direct our paths, our journey, our work. And, uh, you know, I want to I get my learning development center together. I have, that's on my brain. I don't think it's not on my brain. A lot of other things are going on. We got to, you know, be mindful of the youth. Uh, I, I told you all what Joel Osteen said. That was his biggest budget in this church was the youth department. He invested in his youth. Come on, y'all. We got to invest in our youth. There's nothing really that we should not be doing for our youth that we, within our reason, to do it because they are our future. They are our future because, trust me, I said, you know, they need to be occupied uh, with something that's going to draw them, win them. Amen. We have young people here. We thank God for our young people workers. Uh, Blanton's, the Orton's, work on our young people. So we want to see them succeed, do well. Amen. Have what Moses, uh, Nehemiah says, that I want to have what? Great success. Come on, y'all. God, we thank you tonight for this study of the word. God, we thank you for your people who gather tonight. God, we love you. God, we magnify you. God, we appreciate the eloquent prayer of Nehemiah. I thank God for the way the mothers pray. Mother Benning, take the time to draw in those that are in need of prayer and lay out the matter of the heart. Then we take it to God in prayer. Lord, I, I, I was just spellbound today sitting in my home in my, my, my time reading this lesson and come across this, that passage today and say, God, this is my Bible study tonight. That, that eloquent prayer of Nehemiah. We have so much that we need to pray to God about. But we have an expected outcome of that prayer. Amen. 
we believe in God that his ears and his eyes are attentive and he's going to come through. God, let healing come in our bodies, our afflictions. Touch my wife, God, on tonight. Amen. Touch your body, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, God, those others named the uh, Al Storks, praise God, and the Dixies and other family names that we may not have. Elder, Wal Elder Walder, touch him, God, right where he is, God, right now. Hallelujah. Brother Bird, the prayer list that we have in this house. Thank you, God, for our chairman tonight that's in this room, God. Hallelujah. We want to give him a mic to say something before we get out of here. And God, we're going to thank you in advance. Heal us of our sicknesses, our diseases, God. We trust in you, believe in you. If there's anything too hard for you, God, we know that you can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Bless you. Deep.